back to Off, over 50 and fired. Now what? With Linda and Shelly. Last time we talked about creating a marketing plan, which identifies what makes you, you. What makes you, unique. In order to ensure that your first impression is both positive and memorable. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on branding, and we're going to focus in on your LinkedIn profile, which now is your broad-based first impression to the world. But before that, what are we going to do, Shelley? We're going to give you our wine selection for the evening. It's a Radius Reserve Cabernet from Columbia Valley region in Washington. Where my in-laws are from. Our first thought when the restructuring happened was that we needed to update our resumes. As we discussed for Shelley, it was a dusting off, and for me, it was a full resurrection. We thought that our primary self-marketing tool would be just to hand off our resumes to our recruiters, but we were sadly wrong. It's a completely different world out there. That's right. For me, I assumed it would be different because the last time I did this was 20 mm. years ago. But for Shelly, it was a bigger surprise because it was only six years ago that she actually got this new, this new you know her previous job. What we found was that LinkedIn plays a much bigger role in your job search. A really big role. Yes. You know, whether it be the job search or your career development or even um, the business promotion of, for these days if you, if you have uh, your own business. In this episode, we're going to focus on the branding side of LinkedIn versus networking, which we're going to tackle in an upcoming uh, podcast. Right, because there's a lot to the whole networking piece. That's right. So how the frag do you get started? First of all, it's not just one thing. There are four to five components. So Linda, what are they? All right. So first is um, the introduction. Um, there's a large section. And let me tell you, there's a huge amount of stuff in this introduction section. And this is a really important one. What's the very first one, Linda? Your name. <laughs> Make right. sure you got your name right. That's right. You got to have your name right. Spell it correctly. And then the second thing is your picture. You know, you want to make sure that it's professional, but you're also approachable. You don't want to scare people off. You don't want to have, look like a Debbie Downer. You just, uh, you know, make, want to make sure that you don't scare people away. Right. So one way to actually distinguish yourself is a display or background header. And this is important because it can actually distinguish yourself. And within your picture, there's the display background header, which a lot of people don't know that you can actually change that out from the default LinkedIn graphic, which is that light blue with the connecting dots with another graphic that may be more personal to who you are or where you're from and it will be able to like make you more distinct and have you stand out um, what else is there Shelley uh, you also need a headline so and your headline really is just about a short description or overall descriptor that really crystallizes your area of expertise you know so for example you know you could be a global an analytics leader you could be marketing strategy executive you could be digital and e-commerce thought leader right that's right Shelley. and everyone also needs to include their current position or title you should always have a current position your most recent job or project whether it be paid or not you need to show activity activity is really important you don't want to be idle. No, absolutely not. And then the next thing is really about your education. And here, we're only doing like a high-level thing. So it's not the nitty-gritty. You know, the details come later. So it's what are the final elements of the, uh, the introduction section. The next one is your location, which is where do you currently reside or work in. And that's really by, done by selecting a zip code. And that's important for recruiters so they know if you're already in the area or whether you're gonna, they're going to have to relocate you. So the next one is industry, and this is from a drop-down list. You pick the ones that are closest to the area that you work in. The next one is the largest piece, which you should be spending some time on, is the summary. This is really your personal brand statement, and it should include what makes you unique. So, Shelley, what do you think should be included within that summary and what's important? Well, I think what's really cool and important is things like, you know, the idea of keywords that will help recruiters find you and make you stand out. Uh, the keywords should be linked to your resume. That's right, but the summary shouldn't really be verbatim uh, from your resume. It should be more conversational, engaging, mm -hmm. and your personality should really shine through that uh, summary statement. Yeah, it definitely has to come through. And from a format perspective, you should really have good, adequate spacing so it's easy to read for everyone. Yeah, you really don't want to make people struggle. That's right. 
uh, hey, you can also add sentences to provide customized information, such as specific industries of interest or geographical preferences. And last but not least, there's a media section where you can upload any relevant links um, that reinforces your skill sets or uniqueness. You can also add a video. Yeah, I included a video, a training video that I did just so that folks could actually see me in action. So that's the introduction section, which is fairly long. So what's next, Shelley? Uh, next is the experience section. Which basically should be highlights, not the actual verbatim from your resume. You should have at least the last three positions or reflect 10 to 15 years if you're old enough. Are you yeah, old enough? Sean? I'm old enough. And it's pretty funny because when we talked about this and we said, and you asked me what I put on, I said, you know, I put my last three positions and you said, well, how long was that? I said about 15 years. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, it goes by pretty fast, I guess. Then there's your education. And this is really where you add a little bit more detail than you did in your overall introduction. It tells around your degrees and your concentration. Right. So the next one is pretty important for people who are, are looking um, to fill uh, job postings is your skills and endorsements. Um, here you can identify like what industry knowledge you have, um, what interpersonal uh, skills you have, such as leadership or strategic thinking. It also gives you an opportunity to identify other unique skills that you may have. You can type in your skill sets and many are already in the LinkedIn database. So they're actually will, once you start typing, they'll actually appear. So you can see what's been used in the database more than others. And what I really think is cool is that others can endorse you, right? So, uh, you know, you, you get more clicks to say what's really important when, for those who start to view your profile. Yeah, that's right. And then in addition to the skills, uh, the other section or the last section that you'll have in here is the recommendation section. You can send a request to specific people within the LinkedIn community. So you can only get recommended by those people who are already on LinkedIn. If they're outside, they can't post a recommendation. But when you send out that request uh, for a recommendation, you should personalize the request and provide them guidance on what kind of skills or capabilities you want them to highlight in the recommendation. Right, and also others in LinkedIn can send you a recommendation at a time, right, which is really cool. So for either situation, you have the opportunity to read and provide the feedback, like Linda had said, and you must accept the recommendation so that it will appear in your profile. Right. So actually, you can decline any recommendation. You don't have to accept it. Um, you have the opportunity to have uh, first uh, view of them and uh, first denial of them. So when you're filling out the profile, you should really target 100% completeness, and that means you get all-star status, which that's, is really cool. That's right. So they'll actually give you a status or, you know, this thing that says that you've completed every single section. Right. And I don't even think I've done mine completely. I have to check. I think I have. Girl. I'm not sure. You're better than me. <laughs> of course I am. Okay. So now let's move on to the technical part, the important setting. Linda, how many settings are there? Oh, there are a bazillion settings, Shelley, that you need to consider on your, on your profile. <laughs> you can also spend a bazillion hours on LinkedIn settings, but we're just going to focus on the most critical, the real must-haves. Right, and the really first one is about your LinkedIn URL. You have to make sure that it's personalized, right? The default is a random text. It's some gobbledygook. Right. And you want to have yours be personalized with your name. And also it's easier for people to find you. Yeah. And it looks better on your resume it when does. you include your Instead LinkedIn. Instead of gobbledygook. Exactly. <laughs> that gobbledygook. Uh, so if you want to do that, um, the way it should look is it should be www.linkedin.com forward slash in slash your name. That's a lot. <laughs> I know. It's a lot. It's not really hard, though. No, it's not. Um, all it really, it's not very difficult at all to do. Um, all you have to do is go into your LinkedIn profile you click on edit, which is the pencil icon, and then in the upper right-hand corner, click on edit URL. Just replace the random gobbledygook that Shelley talked mm -hmm. about with your first and last name. So those checking out your profile, this is a real quick way to let them know that you're computer literate. Yep, that you're savvy. Computer savvy. Savvy, savvy, savvy is important. So what else about this uh, settings? That... Well, you got to think about privacy and settings, right? So one of the things you, you should consider is uh, turning off your sharing profile edits before editing so not everybody knows that you're working on this stuff. I think that's important. Yep. And You should, and you should also wait 24 hours before turning the updates or the broadcast back on. Yep, and then you should uh, choose private profile characteristics if you wish to look at other people but you don't want them to know you're looking at them. 
I didn't know. So you I, can I secretly love, stalk someone? Yeah. You can be a, you, yeah, you can be a LinkedIn stalker. <laughs> I can be a LinkedIn stalker. <laughs> yep. The other is you should select how much of your profile you want to actually have visible to other people who are searching with you online. You actually don't have to make all the sections visible to everyone. And that you can do by clicking on edit public profile. Right. And then, then the last one is, you know, you want to make sure that your primary LinkedIn email is yours and not your company email. Yeah. Right. And, and I think we were talking about this when yes. we had read, you know, if you've got like an AOL or Yahoo, you really like or think, MSN. Right. That you should really think about a Gmail one because it just makes you more current and not be so dated. Right. We don't think so, but that's what we heard. So those are the basics for your LinkedIn profile from branding perspective. Remember, we'll be covering off on how to network using LinkedIn in our upcoming episodes. Okay. So what we want to do is, you know, we continue to say that we love to hear your stories and helpful hints and feedback on our episodes, but we actually want to take some time right now to actually give some of our viewer feedback. Right, Shelly? Yes, absolutely. Do we have it? We do have it. it. Let me pull up uh, some of the emails. Okay, please do. Hold on. So here we go. So from one of our listeners, she basically had said, I've listened to your podcast and I completely relate. This is the second time I lost my job and I cannot believe how much I've grown. I've learned and pushed myself to do better. I've been able to recognize my weaknesses and strengths and reflect on what I have accomplished. We will all be fine. And basically, you know, she's kind of reinforcing what we always say, which is when one door closes, a better one opens. That's right. That to stay positive throughout this whole process. And also to remember that when you do get a job, you don't have to put yourself on, um, you know, you don't have to always uh, be worried about losing it because you should be prepared to move on to the next opportunity as it comes along. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another comment from one of our listeners. She said, I just listened to episode one and I found it fantastic, very genuine and sincere. And I could feel what you were feeling. Thank you for off a good resource for us over 50 and fired. Can't wait for the next episodes. It's good to hear that people feel that we are genuine and that we're kind of speaking from the heart. That's always nice to know. Yeah, and that everybody can relate. So we'll be giving some of the feedback, you know, that we're getting on our podcast, um, commentary on our podcast um, over the next uh, few episodes. So keep your comments coming in. And again, if you want to submit anything, please go to www.over50andfired.com and click on Contact Us. Also, you can post to our blog. Right. On our next podcast, we're going to finally finish our series on branding. And we'll be talking about executive presence and up-credentialing. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.